For too long, healthcare has lacked a comprehensive data set that is truly representative of all Americans. One of the problems that we've seen with a lot of data collection is that it's just one region, one group of patients. But by having a nationwide data system that includes diversity, it really helps get to discovery faster. It's been said that the best care in the world is somewhere, but not everywhere. We're striving to help all medical professionals learn through data. The more data we have, the quicker it is to get to easy answers about what works and what doesn't. For the first time in the history of health, we're going to have enough data at scale to dramatically advance innovation in healthcare. It is something that has not existed before. This is new. This is innovative. This is transformative. With Truveta's unprecedented data platform and powerful tools, we'll see insights increase exponentially. There is no question in my mind that Truveta will enable a robust data set that looks like America. Now, please welcome the CEO of Truveta, Terry Meyerson. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. It's so great to be together at an in-person conference. Now, let's all go back to two years ago. Providence had discovered the first U.S. case of COVID-19, and the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. Thousands of people were dying. Schools and workplaces abruptly transitioned to fully remote, and our expectations were set that vaccines would take years. It was just a tense time full of uncertainty. I only have one photo from spring 2020, taken by my daughter as we experienced social distancing for the first time. And I feel like my expression and gray beard says a lot. <laughs> I was scared for my family, scared for their health. My son was supposed to go off to college across the country, and I worried for my friends and family. Our trust in the information and faith in the guidance we were receiving was just bewildering. It was all conflicting. I vividly remember President Trump debating hydroxychloroquine over Twitter with the World Health Organization. President Trump would cite clinical studies, and then the World Health Organization would warn against its use. And I remember wondering, how could this be happening? So when I got a call from Providence to join a team that spanned Northwell Health and Trinity Health to help, I couldn't say yes fast enough. I joined a team that knew there were valuable insights buried within the haystacks of data they each managed. But they knew by combining their data to have a more representative data set, they would be able to learn entirely new things. Discoveries were just waiting to be unlocked. But many had tried to tackle this challenge before, but this time the stakes were much higher. The world needed faster answers, clear guidance, and the chance to learn from each other. It's just truly amazing to me to reflect on how this moment in time brought together these innovative health system leaders from all across the nation to create a new company which they would jointly go govern to build the health data platform America needs. Before I started as CEO, I remember Rod Hockman, the CEO of Providence, joking about how my biggest challenge might be having a dozen health system CEOs as bosses. But the truth is, I wouldn't have it any other way. Because the first hurdle in unlocking the power of data is building trust. And patients trust their doctors. And when I think about the health data and the need to earn the trust of the patients from which this de-identified data comes, there just can be no compromise. Now, we all shared a vision of saving lives with data. We knew that with data, we could enable researchers to find cures faster, empower every clinician to be an expert, and help families make more informed decisions about their care. But our shared COVID experience gave us a clear point of view on what the data platform we needed. We want to be able to ask, easily ask and answer questions about America's health every day. At the core, we needed de-identified medical records. 
Truveta's membership now includes 20 of our country's largest health systems, which provide over 16% of all clinical care in the United States every day. This provides us the scale to be representative of the full diversity of our country and to find the needles in the haystack that we need to improve patient care. We need to update it every day, daily, so that we can be responsive in this pandemic, the next pandemic, and quickly staff our clinical trials. And we need to link these medical records across providers linking with their insurance claims, linking with mortality data, and link with socioeconomic data so that we can see the complete patient experience. So with that vision, the technical challenge began. Trevetta is not just working with the financial exhaust of healthcare, the structured claims records. Claims are only the tip of the iceberg for patient information. They are easy to analyze, but don't tell us much to improve patient care. From a claim, we can learn that a patient got a lab test, but we don't know the lab test result. We don't see any symptoms. We don't see any side effects. We see no outcomes from the medical claims. Trevetta is working with the full clinical data recorded during care. Trevetta sees the full set of diagnoses, not just the reimbursable billing codes. We are seeing the vital signs, the lab test values, the clinical notes with the symptoms, the images, and, ge and the genomics. This is all of the data which led to the diagnosis, the treatment plan, and the outcomes. Now, as a technologist, I had to ask, why hasn't this been done before? And that's when a board member shared with me this very memorable tweet. Trevetta is receiving data recorded in Epic, Cerner, Allscripts, Meditech, and other clinical systems. Our industry tries hard to minimize the structured coding, which doctors have to do. Thus, we have this mountain of unstructured information within the EHR. It is truly amazing what accretes in the real data, being touched by so many people and IT systems. My favorite medication that we've seen so far in the real data? Yellow blinking light. <laughs> My favorite diagnosis, alarm on. Now, fortunately, we have the National Library of Medicine that has been working for decades to create structured ontologies that we can map this text to. And like our healthcare leaders, they are a real hero of Truvetta. And while de-identified clinical data is Truvetta's core, effectively studying US health requires linking with additional data. And for that, Trevetta needed a partner who shared our values. LexisNexis's data is the financial services standard for preventing fraud. And we're so excited to have their data on the Trevetta platform. People change their names. Names get misspelled. We need to link these together as one person to study their journey. Two thirds of people die outside the hospital. Thus, their medical records are incomplete. We want to study all health conditions, including those, that, especially those that lead to death. So we need this mortality data to come into the platform. Socioeconomic data is a key driver of health outcomes and essential to studying health equity. LexisNexis provides us socioeconomic data on every adult American. 70% of all commercial medical insurance claims, 40% of all Medicare and Medicaid claims, so we can see the complete patient journey even when they receive care outside of Trevetta's members. We're so excited to be working with LexisNexis on our vision of saving lives with data. So now for the first time, I'd like to show you Trevetta. Let's take a look at what was happening with COVID last week across the United States. Is the screen switched? Cool. Start my browser, log into Trevetta. You can see a variety of studies I'm involved with. But one of the first things you'll do, I think, when you come into Trevetta, or any researcher will, is check out this data sheet on the data set in Trevetta. It's updated as data flows in daily from all the health systems across the country. And you can see here, right now, live on the Trevetta platform, is data on 50 million American patients growing daily as new patients come to our member health systems. We break down all the demographics, 
just like you would in a clinical study. And you can see we don't, appro we don't exactly approach the demographics of the U.S. yet. We're very excited to more data come on and so we can really represent the full diversity of our countries for any study, remove bias, and it's all transparent. Uh, in terms of depth of the data, you can see the average patient has over 61 encounters, and so we have very deep data, and the average patient we're seeing is three to five years of data. So there's quite a bit of data on these 50 million Americans, and we break it down based upon the type of data, the comorbidities of these patients. And so it's basically the, the data sheet you would expect in any high-quality peer-reviewed research being available all the time for your Truvetta research. Now, I'm going to one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what other organizations are on the Truvetta platform. I'm part of the Truvetta R&D organization. We have a separate Truvetta research team. But here you see all 20 of our health systems on the Truvetta platform. I'm going to go into the organization that our research team manages. And you can see here, here are the studies which they have done. This COVID-19 vaccines and comorbidities, this was a study which they uh, conducted last November and published. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replicate that into the R&T organization so I can inspect it closely and reproduce it and, so let me duplicate it. I'm gonna duplicate this into the Truvetta art. So all of the documentation, all of the code, all of the data, it's all been replicated into the Truvetta R&D organization where I am. And now we're gonna take a look at the study. The study consists of three main components, obviously the, the narrative up top, but then there's dashboards, data populations, and then the code to support the study. So let's look at the dashboard the team built for, as part of this study. And this is a dashboard which is looking at COVID breakthrough infections every day in the US. You can see we have the 50 million patients up top. Here you can see the Omicron spike uh, in breakthrough infections that was taking place across the country. Days since vaccination when the breakthrough infection was taking place here. You can see hospitalization rate, it's all broken down per vaccine. And then we can slice and dice by age, race, ethnicity, sex, vaccine manufacturer, and comorbidity. One of the advantages of seeing the full medical record is we see the comorbidities of the people who are having these breakthrough infections. Uh, it's just interesting that, you know, this being updated every day, we can look at it, you know, back at the peak of the Omicron wave, it looks like it was, you know, around January 16th, but the, it looks like about 50 people were having, 50 people per 100,000 were having a breakthrough infection every day. Now I can cohort that by those be, who received no booster were receiving 60, those who had a booster were receiving about 30. So the benefits of a booster it actually reduced your rate, your chances of having a breakthrough infection in half. Now we can look at that by comorbidity. Let's look at people with diabetes. They were getting, uh, looks like about 40 per 100,000 every day were having a breakthrough infection, but without a booster, 100. Let's add in a second comorbidity, chronic pulmonary disease. So without a booster, we're seeing about 150 per day with a booster, we're seeing about 60. So that's the, with the daily dashboard that's part of the study that the, that the team built. Let's go back and look at other components of the study, the population. So the population, the use, you can have many populations in your study, but this particular dashboard has a very um, straightforward population definition. Anyone who's been seen in the system in the last two years and anyone who's fully vaccinated. But of course, if you've done a clinical study, you say defining, clinical, defining fully vaccinated is actually quite a challenge. Well, with Trivetta, we allow you to express a, con a complex concept like fully vaccinated in a very transparent and reproducible way. So you can see the Pfizer vaccine is actually one of four things in the medical record, Moderna one, Janssen one, but then you have to get the spacing right. You wanna make sure they had two consecutive vaccinations more than two weeks apart, and then there's been two weeks since the second vaccination, because only after that has occurred is it a breakthrough infection. So being able to express that in a consistent and transparent way is, is part of the Truvetta platform. And now, last but not least, is of course the code. We have the data and then the code. So in Truvetta, we have here the Jupyter Notebook, it, or the, it contains all the Python code and the R code, which the team used to, to do the study 
and I just replicated it out of their organization into mine to see. And here I can see the visualizations, the code, all the works. So what do you think? <laughs> that was COVID. But consider that Trevetta's data covers all therapeutic areas. Imagine what we could discover together. Now, I just showed you a Trevetta study built by our three-person research team in three weeks last fall. Last November, we published the study results with COVID comorbidities and breakthrough infections. In January, the, VD, the CDC validated that work by issuing a study with remarkably similar statistical results for the same time period, but two months later. All of the data which the Trevetta study was conducted is available to the Trevetta platform. All of the data is in the Trevetta platform. All of the code which the Trevetta study was done with is on GitHub. Trevetta members can easily reproduce the Trevetta study. The CDC study has no like transparency. We can't reproduce the study. It's completely opaque. Meanwhile, our FDA has access to COVID data from one Israeli health system upon which to make critical safety decisions. And that one Israeli health system in no way represents the diversity of the United States. Representation, transparency, and reproducibility will build trust in medical research, the likes of which we sorely needed two years ago when President Trump and the World Health Organization were debating COVID therapies. And it's critical to the learning health system we need every day to treat every patient for every condition. As an industry, we need to learn faster. We need to trust each other. When I reflect upon all the industry challenges we are trying to tackle at Trevetta, privacy, fragmentation, unstructured data, building trust in the data is the most important mission we are on. Now, last but not least, an ask for every healthcare leader here today who might be listening. With each health system that joins Truveta and contributes their data, we can research rare and more precise conditions, accelerating the insights needed for better patient care. Consider Moat Wilson syndrome, which afflicts the daughter of Truveta's chief operating officer, Lisa Gurry. It is estimated that one in 50,000 children have this condition, yet only 300 are described in the literature. There's just not enough data available in one place to study this disease and help families with the best care. This is the challenge that innovators like Dr. Moat and Dr. Wilson face in finding people with this condition and learning from their experience. And why families like Lisa's, even with the best medical care available, didn't receive her daughter's diagnosis until she was 12. We can have a real impact on the world by bringing our data together. Thus to all the healthcare leaders listening, we welcome you to join us on our mission of saving lives with data. If you're interested in following our progress, please follow Trevetta on LinkedIn. We will be continuing to publish our progress in our building our team, industry partnerships, and insights from the Trevetta platform on our LinkedIn feed. Thank you.